dear friends and net aspirants welcome back to yet another video lecture of high point and in this video we will be learning about the great essayist and uh, writer of jacobian period or uh, we can say elizabethan period or 17th century known as francis bacon he lived from 1561 to 1626 so we'll be learning about bacon his uh, major works some details about his personal and uh, his uh, career and at the same time we'll be looking at some important works uh, of him and his writing style and some quotes uh, famous quotes by francis Bacon. So I hope I am sure that most of us have learned Francis Bacon and his essays uh, in our MA classes, and we know we are familiar with his style to some extent. But still, we will we'll look some more details now. And if you want to know more about him or any other writer that you need to cover for your NTA, UGC, NET, JRF, English language and literature, you can visit my website. The entire study materials in the form of audio lectures, PDFs, and previous and practice question papers and any more bonuses if you want to know more about the study materials course details or bonuses and the fee structure of the study materials then you can obviously message me or whatsapp me in this number or in instagram also you can message me my id is right here like you can find many materials in my youtube channel in instagram too we are providing variety of materials in the form of reels uh, study cards and in story also we are doing many things you can visit me and you can follow me if you are interested to have more materials for NTA, UGC, NET, JRF, English language and literature. So let's begin our uh, our class about or our video about Francis Bacon. Let's have an introduction about his uh, life and career. He was a philosopher, statesman, Francis Bacon born in London in 1561. And he studied at Trinity College from 1573 to 1575 and in 1576 his father dies leaving the family impoverished and penniless. So he was having a mediocre life and uh, in 1576 his father died in that year. So that actually left the family impoverished and uh, penniless. So suddenly they uh, experienced poverty. He started studying law and called to the bar in 1582 and in 1584 Bacon composed his first political memorandum, a letter of advice to Queen Elizabeth. Bacon's political career flourished under the reign of King James I. So, in during the Jacobian period, his uh, career as a philosopher, as a statesman, as a writer flourished. Okay, uh, but he composed his first political memorandum in the year 1584, and this titled as a letter of advice to Queen Elizabeth. Now, next, Bacon was knighted in 1603. 1603 is the year of Queen Elizabeth's death and uh, James I ascended to the throne of England. And in that same year, Bacon got knighted and further received a number of appointments including Solicitor General, Attorney General, Lord Chancellor and the Lord Keeper of the Great Seal, his father's position. So his father was Lord Keeper of the Great Seal and later he also became uh, he also held the same positions. He also became a member of the Privy Council and received two titles, Baron Verulam and Viscount St. Albans. So, he also held as a member, he was a member of Privy Council, which is a powerful uh, position that directly you will get direct contact with the Queen or the King and the uh, you will be advising the king and the queen okay and uh, thereby he also received many other important uh, politically important positions his political career came to an abrupt end in 1621 he, when he was impeached for taking bribes so he was a powerful man and he was having a great life but still he accepted bribe from other people due to that his career his wonderful political career actually came to an abrupt sudden end in 1621 he lost his position in the court as well and he devoted the remaining years of his life to writing and uh, produced some of his most significant works so since he had no political career then he devoted the remaining time the remaining years of his life in writing he was an amazing writer and he produced some of his most significant works after terminating uh, his uh, political career now let's see 
Bacon's important works, essays. So he mainly wrote essays and political memorandum and political essays and all. Uh, so his such essays compo compiled together in a work known as Essays and it was published in the year 1597. And the next work is The Proficiencies and Advancement of Learning and it is better known as Advancement of Learning. And it is published in 1605 and it consists of two books. So, Proficiencies and Advancement of Learning consists of two books and it is dedicated to King James I. So, Advancement of Learning is written by Bacon and it is dedicated to King James I. Book 1 contains, let's see briefly what Book 1 and 2 uh, contain. In Book 1, it discredits of learning from human defects of the uh, learned and emptiness of many of the studies chosen. So, it gives discredits to the learning from human defects. And he also uh, finds, he also finds emptiness and devoidness of many of the studies chosen. Uh, you know, there are many disciplines to study, but he cited that some of the uh, studies, they are pointless, they are empty, there is nothing to uh, provide for humanity after, after learning that. In book second, he makes a survey and classification of all kinds of knowledge. So, he makes a survey, he analyzes and he makes a survey and classifies all kinds of knowledge. And he tried to introduce a new system of learning based on observation and reason. So, he cited that many disciplines and studies are empty and they are uh, useless and worthless. At the same time, he introduced a new system of learning and that learning proposed by Bacon is based on observation and reason. The next work by him is The Wisdom of the Ancients, published in the year 1619. Next work by Bacon is Novum Organum. So, at least remember the titles and some details related to them, okay? Novum Organum, published in the year 1620. Another title for Novum Organum is The New Instrument. New Instrument is another title for Novum Organum. And it was published in Latin and inten intended to be a successor to Aristot Aristotle's works on logic. So, Aristotle came up with many uh, works and he also had some works on logic. So, uh, he published, Bacon published Novum Organum in Latin and he intended this to be a successor to Aristotle's works on logic. And the book is a part of a large unfinished book by Bacon which is titled as Terration Magna. So, uh, Novum Organum, it was published as a separate book, but still, this book is uh, intended to be a uh, part of a large uh, unfinished book by Bacon, and he titled that unfinished book as Instauration Magna. Instauration Magna. It argued in favor of knowledge based on experience or practice of the truth. So, he proposed a new kind of learning, which is based on logic and uh, observation the same way he argued in favor of knowledge which is based on experiences uh, or practices rather than speculations and all the next work by bacon is the history of the reign of king henry the seventh published in 1622 the history of winds in 1622 and uh, apothegms new and old in 16 25. So, he has came up with many, many works and all. I have mentioned only the important ones. Still, we have some more, I guess. Yeah, New Atlantis. The New Atlantis is also one of the major works by Bacon and it was published in the year 1626. It is an incomplete utopian novel. So, what is utopia? You, about utopia, we have done a detailed, uh, detailed video. You can check the playlist titled as age of revival to have a video about utopia and its author thomas more so utopia means a place you cannot find nowhere but in modern times uh, after uh, when english entered into literature entered into its modern forms you can find that utopia or utopian that word refers to something ideal so here bacon represents bacon came up with an ideal society which is based on his uh, vision of uh, future human uh, society, okay? And he portrayed, the new At Atlantis portrayed a vision of the future of human discovery and knowledge. It depicts an ideal land, a mythical land known as Ben Salem, and he locates uh, this Ben Salem, this, this place somewhere west of Peru. Peru is a, uh, is a 
real place, right? So he locates Bensalem, his utopian land, somewhere west of Peru. So do remember the name Bensalem, uh, in which uh, the story of New Atlantis happens, okay? So it's a utopian novel and it's an incomplete and finished work by Bacon too. So these are some of the major works by Bacon. And here are some major essays by uh, Francis Bacon. And if you want individual videos about any of these essays, you can obviously comment that. And some of these essays you must have learned in your MA or BA classes. So of truth, I have learned in both in my MA and BA classes of revenge, of parents and children, of marriage and single life, of atheism, of nobility, of ambition, of stimulation and dissimulation, of riches, of death. See, he has, uh, he has written about many aspects of life many emotions and many relations and many uh, things, philosophical things that we can find in our life, okay? So, these are some of the essays. There are so many. I have mentioned some of them. Next. What is his style of composition? We know when we see his essays, it is so short and it is so rigid and, uh, you know, there is not even a sentence that we can skip in that essay. It should be so, you know, organically packed and uh, he has used punctuations immensely. So, all the possibilities of punctuation, usage of punctuation marks, you can see in Bacon's essays. So, let's see some of the styles of Bacon's composition. Strong organic, organic unity of structure. See, there, it, it will be wholesome. This essays will be wholesome and organically it is united. Every other element of this essay uh, will be united in such a way that you cannot rem remove even a comma a, or a full stop or a question mark or a word or a sentence from that essay. So, if you remove, that will affect the organic unity. So, that, that strong it will be. In, in that way, uh, Bacon has constructed his essays. His divisions into paragraphs is not like the modern system of paragraphing. So, uh, how we paragraph an essay is different from his style because he all of a sudden he will stop and he will start a, a, a new paragraph. Not like the second paragraph will be a, just a continuation. There will be an uh, interconnection between the paragraphs. No, not necessarily like that. His style has been called aphorism. So, this is a style that he followed, aphoristic style. So, Bacon's style has been called aphorism. Do remember it. It gives firmness and yet flexibility. So, it gives a kind of strong, strongness and unity. At the same time, it will be flexible. Aphorism suggests profoundity and intellectual authority. So, since he followed a aphoristic style, he followed a style of aphorism, aphorism suggests profoundity, a kind of depth in whatever he is saying and uh, in a kind of intellectual authority uh, uh, about whatever he is claiming through his essays. His effective use of images and metaphor, that is another important style of uh, his composition. So, whenever he says something, he will use images, metaphors and similes in order to substantiate what he is saying and in order to bring about a more uh, organic impact upon whoever is reading that lines, that essays. And he also was very particular about uh, the use of allusions and references mainly of Latin, Greek and English modern writers. So, when if you see as an example of truth and or if you read of truth, let's say you will find many references uh, or to Latin uh, quotes. You will find Latin and Greek and English modern writer allusions and uh, quotes from other people you will find in his essays. And that's another uh, important uh, style of Bacon. And you can see that his own, essay, his own sentences, whatever he's saying in his essays, we can take as it is as a quote, as it is a very crisp and clear quote. So, these are some of the styles that he followed while he composed these essays. Now, let's see some important quotes of Bacon. If a man will begin with uncertainty, if a man will begin with certain ideas, he shall end in doubts. But if he will be content to begin with doubts, he shall end in certain ideas. 
knowledge is power. So many people before him also has used uh, knowledge is power. Fame is like a river that buried up things light and swollen and drowns things weighty and solid. Okay, so he uses such uh, comparisons and or in order to bring about more effect uh, for what he is saying, what he is stating. Reading make the full man, confidence a ready man, and writing an exact man. So this is a quote from Of Truth. Imagination was given to man to compensate him for what he is not, a sense of humor to console him for what he is. Wise are young men's mistresses, companions for middle aged and old men's nurses. This is a quote from the essay of marriage and single life. So these are some of the quotes you can find each and every line that he writes in his essays. They are kind of quotes. They, are, they have their own beauty because he follows a certain kind of rigidity, that a certain kind of uh, you know, closeness while he states things and he uses punctuation marks immensely in order to, uh, in order to give a crispy nature to whatever he is saying. He is not explaining too many things. So whatever he says, he makes it crystal clear and crisp. That's how he presents. Uh, everything whatever he is uh, telling so that's all about uh, francis bacon it was a brief video i hope uh, you find it worth and useful if you have any doubts do ask me in the comment section and if you want to know more about the course that we are providing for your net of english language and literature preparation paper 2 you can visit my website or also you can uh, for, for me or whatsapp me in the number or don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel if you have not subscribed or if you want more um, materials for NTA UGC net JR of English language and literature do subscribe and press the bell icon while you subscribe and also don't forget to follow me on instagram uh, my id is right here you will find daily materials there more brief and more crisp and more uh, you know more comprehensible instagram story instagram feed and reel section so that's all about it meet you in the videos meet you in the next video session until then stay tuned to high point and be happy in your life wherever you are guys and study hard for your goal of achieving net of english language and literature bye bye thank you